Watches are yet another easy way rich people make their money into more money. As tattooed rockers, tech brothers, and INS Diagram influencers pile into the tweedy world of watch collecting, prices for sought-after classics from brands like Rolex, Omega, and Patek Philippe are shooting up. In some cases, these next-generation collectors see old-time pieces not just as a subtly stylish way to dress up a t-shirt and jeans, but also as in a market where st time you elegantly monitored you will tell. Even though his investment in watches has doubled in value in just 18 months, Peter Goodwin, a private investor in Charlottesville, Virginia, who also collects watches, said he is concerned about frothiness in the vintage market. It's much like momentum investing in stocks, he said. People see the rise, the question, Mr. Goodwin said, is when does it stop? That's a risk that newcomer watch geeks like Cheyenne Hendizada, a recent business school graduate in Los Angeles, are willing to take. Buying a good vintage Rolex is just like purchasing stock in a company like Nestle or Google, Mr. Hendizada, 25, said. It is the quintessent. After taking a face plant on a long shot dollar 2000 investment in American apparel stock, just months before the company declared bankruptcy, he bought a 1982 Rolex Submariner for dollar 13,000. It has appreciated, and in the event of an economic downturn, fine watches may turn out to represent a safe haven asset, like metals or gems, for investors looking to diversify their portfolios. Or they may just be, watch collectors hide in plain sight. John Mayer's watch, Silicon Valley heavyweights like Kevin Rose, the Dig founder, and Matt Jacobson, Facebook's employee number 8, have museum-worthy Rolexes and Patek Philippe's, helping to establish a head-turning timepiece as a tech world-style flourish to rival the hoodie. Ellen DeGeneres wore a Holy Grail Paul Newman model Rolex Daytona from the 1960s, now worth perhaps $250,000, while bantering with Jerry Seinfeld in an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee last year. Adam Levine and Ed, in professional sports, high-end timepieces have long seemed as indispensable as a shoe contract for stars with seven- and eight-figure incomes. Top athletes and star players who have been traded have been known to trade a Rolex to a player on their new team to secure their old jersey number. And in recent year, if you're still 1%-ish but would prefer to dabble, there's good news. Run by Dominic, star power and funds like Mr. Coos add credence to the idea that fine watches are a soybean or a copper, another investable commodity. But does that make the, what even makes a watch valuable? Consider the bezel and arm submariners made in the third quarter of 1957, the bezel insert was made with an unusual red triangle at 12 o'clock and slightly different typography on the numerals. Because it is rare, none of this necessarily makes sense. It's not like a vintage, a new, for example, is a modern update of a decades old classic that seems to be every budding watch geek's first serious timepiece. The new sub is a mo no one would ever say that about its predecessor, those mid-century submariners made famous by Sean Connery's James Bond, which are shooting up in value despite the fact that they feature an acrylic that is, plastic crystal prone to scratches and cracks, a hollow steel bracelet that eventually might stretch like an accordion, and a painted dial that could fade from the original black to an espresso brown, known to collectors as a tropical dial. Which is, naturally, why old watches are considered cool they have patina, provenance, soul. And for a generation, vintage watches should show off their age, said Nelson Murray, a 31-year-old photographer and budding collector in San Francisco. Vintage sport watch prices for some Rolex GMT master models you in the proper condition, with original parts you have spiked to perhaps $16,000, up from $8,000 just two or three years ago said Paul Altieri of Bob's Watches, a prominent retailer in Newport Beach, California. It routinely shook a few years ago, Matt Brainek, a watch-loving photographer who recently founded a men's style magazine called William Brown, flipped a 1960s Omega Speedmaster the same model worn by the astronaut Ed White on the first American spacewalk for five times what he paid for it, he said.
that score helped, I convinced her you I think you that it was much more practical to invest regularly in watches that I know about rather than the stock market that I know absolutely nothing about, Mr. Hrainek, 51, said. Benjamin Clymer, the founder of the watch site Hodinkee, which has evolved from a one-man watch blog to a market-moving editorial and e-commerce site selling new and vintage watches, has been practicing a form of horological arbitrage with his collection for years. In 2012, for example, he bought a Patek Philippe Nautilus, a triumph of 1970s mod design that conjures images of Concorde flights and fondue parties, $4.18,000. That watch is worth it. I have a distinct memory of a friend who is now one of the great vintage dealers in the world calling me crazy for spending $30,000 for an early 1950s Omega Speedmaster, he said. The same watch today, with wrist shots flourishing on INS Diagram and watch sites like Hodinkee, Worn and Wound and Monochrome spreading arcane watch knowledge to the masses, collector demand is spreading beyond behemoth brands like Rolex and Omega to lesser known makers like Universal Gen. One particularly coveted version of that venerable Swiss maker's compacts chronograph famously graced the wrist of Nina Rint, the fashionable wife of the 1970s Formula One racer Jochen Rint. It began trading, but no watch has exploded in value like the Paul Newman Daytona. It is an auto racer, whether she noticed it or not, the specific model she selected for Mr. Newman, who could often be found circling the track when he was not making movies, was rare featuring distinctive Art Deco inflected numerals on its three subdials denoting seconds, minutes, and hours. This only appeared, over the years, Mr. Newman's stature as a style icon grew, and so did the mythology you and value you of the Rolex he flashed on magazine covers. In a 2014, those were the days. After Paul Newman, a coveted version known as an Oyster MK1 Panda went for more than $750,000 at a Philips auction in Geneva this past spring, a figure that shocked Mr. Clymer, who once owned that very watch. The oysters are something really special, and go well beyond ticking the box for a rich guy to prove he's cool, Mr. Clymer said. I bought this watch and not every old watch has value. Anyone who scoops vintage watch collecting can prove a minefield for newbie collectors. Even with blue chip, buyers need to figure out if a you actually considered a bad thing, since polishing can wear down the crisp edges of its case, Mr. Wynn said. And they need to watch it. Besides, watch collecting can be similar to art collecting in that dealers tend to reserve the most coveted pieces for insiders and heavyweight collectors, rarely making them available to the general public. And then there are the fickle market tastes that any sort of collector must try to anticipate. Right now, the, there's no telling how the demand for five and six figure time pieces will hold up should, say, a credit implosion in China, or a splintering of the Eurozone, produce, or should democratic socialists sweep to power in Washington on promises of a 70% tax rate on the target demographic for museum worthy watches. Already, some sure things, like certain Daytonas, are looking like slightly less than a sure thing. The market for Daytona just got a little silly for a while, Mr. Clymer said. We saw references, during the bear market of 2008 to 2009, to prices for some high-flying vintage models, including Paul Newman's, dipped by 30 to 40 percent, said Matthew Bain, a dealer of fine watches in Miami Beach. But, like stock, the rebound may seem intoxicating. But people who, investors are not collectors, and collectors are not investors, Mr. Ku said. His watch fund ha in other words, newcomers to the watch world may want to heed the warning attached to brokerage advertisements on television, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Or, they may just want to buy whatever looks cool and leave it at that. Hot, drinking, fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Drinking up, open the park, pot, pot.